the academic side is something that a lot of people have in common. You go to varsity because you want to study. Mm -hmm. But the story is actually in what you go through when you're going through the journey of studying. Mm -hmm. And if all of us are different individuals, it's how you interpret the world that you are trying to navigate while trying to get your degree. The person that you were in high school and the person you become in varsity towards your latter years shifts a lot in your early 20s. Hi there, it was lovely to meet you. My name is Bundu Akwapete. I play the character of Mbali Hadebe on Miss Education, streaming on Netflix. And my name is Lunga Shabalala. I play the character of Sibu Levine on Miss Education, streaming on Netflix on the 15th of September. Awesome. Guys, for the both of you, what does it mean to be a lead in a Netflix series? And, um, can you just give us, yeah, just give us some context on that of like what it really personally means to you to be a lead on a Netflix, on a Netflix series? Well, a lead will tell us. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> it really means a whole lot. You know, these are kind of things that one can only dream of. And for it to actually happen in your lifetime, it, it, it's truly, truly amazing. I didn't think I'd be able to fill up those shoes, but God damn, I did. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I want to be honest, guys. Look, hey, I remember the audition process. I walked into that room and literally from the first running of the lines, I'm like, no, this is it. This is her. <laughs> this is for her. Yeah. I yeah. remember that. <laughs> and I mean, some of the key themes that um, the series touches on is the fees must fall. Um, what do you think? What message do you think miseducation conveys about the power of students uh, voicing, you know, voicing themselves and activism in terms of the fees must fall movement? <clears throat> well, first and foremost, I think the whole fees must fall movement is a serious matter, and what miseducation does very well is we touch on all these things, but in a very satirical manner. So you'll get to see the humor behind it, but the truth of the matter is this is one movement where. The most affected people are the ones who have the, the biggest power. Because if you do mass movements of the scale, the people at the top will realize that, look, the tuition fees are a bit too high and maybe the standards of living aren't the best right now. And Mr. Education, I think, touches to that. And hopefully when the youth does watch it, mm. they get to see the fact that you actually do have the power to control something. 100%. I mean, I was in varsity when Fees Must Fall was happening. And I remember when we re reincarnated the scene i guess i really felt triggered you know because it was speaking to the matters of the youth the most important people in my opinion in the country because they drive the economy forward and they push the people of the nation forward and it was so amazing getting the opportunity especially with burnt onion the way they write the way they produce their their their, their work is truly 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 amazing and i can't wait for people to see especially because it's going to be over 190 countries on netflix and i think that every person who watches that old or young will really get to resonate with what they see mm. and let's talk a bit more about your character journey uh with mbali hadebe <clears throat> You go from uh, being an it girl in a big city and then to a small town university student. How has that challenged you as an actress? Oh, the very concept of Mbali Hadebe has challenged me in that this is someone who is very, very emotional. And when she wants something, she will get it. I had to, I'm quite a people's person or people pleaser sometimes. And I had to really push that aside and say, you know what? I'm going to go get what I want. And she actually helped me. You know, there were scenes that I felt were too big for me to, to um, perform. But when I had to really step inside her character, I got the power, the power of Umbali Hadebe and how I was able to portray that. Yeah. Uh, Lunga, in terms of Sibu, what was your reaction when you were going through your scripts and you realized that, like, this is a young black, a young, young black uh, varsity boy um, living or adopted by a white family. What, what is your reaction? <laughs> yeah. So not <laughs> Very not longer, Shamalala. Um, I think the first thing that you have to realize is don't see it in its um, on the nose writing for what it is. See it as someone who has to identify with something. And if you can kind of get in touch with the fact that all of us go through a phase in life 
where we feel out of place, then you can kind of read into his story and give it your best. But you, you obviously, um, someone like me who hasn't come from um, a white background in terms of parents, but I did go to schools where I liaised with um, people of all races. Mm -hmm. You start to kind of draw from that. Mm -hmm. And you go back to your jock boys, bro, and you switch it up a bit. It's that code switching. Yeah, really. (laughs) (laughs) I can totally relate to you. I mean, I was watching your character throughout the series and I'm thinking like, Damn, this reminds me of me. And I mean, my best mate when I was when I was doing my matric uh, was actually a rower. So I actually kind of oh, wow. know more about like rowing boats and stuff. Yeah. What, what, what research actually about rowing did you discover? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Eddie. Rowing is a lot harder than people think. It is so hard purely because one, it is... The one thing, especially in a, in a crew boat, is the one thing where everyone has to be switched on at the exact same time. Mm. It is a balancing act. It is a rhythm act. Um, Synchronization. It, yeah, it's, it's teamwork. It's cardio. It looks easy when you see it on TV, but I tell you, you the fact that we have Olympians in this country of water with gold, I respect them for that. It is so difficult. It's just hard for me, a fact that it's so difficult for people to get into. But if people got a chance to actually become rowers, I think you would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You would enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, Buntu, I absolutely loved your character's fashion sense. I think whoever did wardrobe nailed it. They killed it. It was amazing. Um, do you Do you really, do you have any inputs in your character's wardrobe? For, did you have any inputs in the series for your character's wardrobe? Yes. I had met the stylist and or head of styling. His name is Bryce. And I loved our relationship from the get-go because this was someone who really cared about how I felt. He's like, I want you to feel good, not only look good. You know, so we did have that rapport, but I loved every single thing he put forward. I said, yes, yes, yes again. So no complaints. And the labels. Okay. Come and on the now. labels. Come on yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Mali is. <laughs> you, can, you can honestly tell. Yeah. I mean... Being a daughter of a of a minister, I mean, of, of course, the money is there. <laughs> the story actually it's surrounded by varsity students. However, it focuses not as much on the academic side as many audience would probably be anticipating. Do you guys know by any chance if that was intentional? <clears throat> yeah, I would think so because um, the academic side is something that a lot of people have in common. You go to varsity because you want to study. Mm -hmm. But the story is actually in what you go through when you're going through the journey of studying. Mm -hmm. And if all of us are different individuals, it's how you interpret the world that you are trying to navigate while trying to get your degree. So it's um, learning about yourself, learning about your peers, um, unlearning yourself sometimes Mm -hmm. because the person that you were in high school and the person you become in varsity towards your latter years shifts a lot in your early 20s. So Mm -hmm. it's that journey and almost how you um, resonate with the people around you in that space where you are outside of the help of your parents because yeah. in high school you went you went home for homework. Yeah. This time you you went raised. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, one of the characters Apiwe, played by Luanda Zwane, really encompasses or highlights what a lot of varsity students are actually going through. And I think she takes care of the academic side rather pretty pretty well, especially coming from um, a poor background, you know, and how she navigates her day-to-day lives. I think she's the only one who actually carries books, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> so we really get to see the, the academic side of things through her character. Mm. Yeah. Oh, guys, thank you so much. Um, you guys have been amazing. And, I, you know, I know the world is going to be looking forward. And I hope that this series will change your lives and elevate you after thank here. You. Um, but, yeah, my name is Eddie Ramatale from SFM Chronicles. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Eddie. you so much.